Hi, welcome to Bot Circuit Vlog. I'm David, so just doing the uh, film behind the camera. And uh, yeah, for this vlog, you might notice that we're doing something a little bit different. We're currently standing at the end of my garden. So, uh, right from the beginning of the vlog, we've been absolutely inundated with requests for uh, tours of the workshop. So today, got round to it and uh, quick life with a fit video tour. Right, so standing at the end of the garden, this is the workshop behind me. And uh, what we've got down here, just going to run you through some of the tools and facilities we've got available to make the video blogs and still the electronics that we do for uh, fun and entertainment. So this is uh, uh, cinder block construction or cement block construction. It's about 20 foot long, 10 foot deep, 12 foot high. We've got about 45 amps of power available down here running from the mains, armour came running down from the house. We've got Ethernet down here as well. And uh, all in all, it's a pretty nice space. We think we've got it pretty kitted out pretty well. And uh, let's take you inside, give you a look around of what we do. Okay, so just coming in through the doors, this is the first bench on the left here. Uh, this one we actually use for sort of what I call messy electronic stuff. So the stuff that's a bit too big to get on the uh, main electronics benches, also things like the etching, anything that involves chemicals, and see. So Formic acid here, so we use that for taking enamel off, uh, the installation of enameled wires, that sort of thing. See, so we also do some of the main stuff over here, where we've got a bit more space and a bit less stuff to short out on. So we've got a nice big um, mains box over here with the usual variable voltage out, current measurement, socket out there, and the nice e stop voltage measurement as well, all of that lot on there. Um, so I'm saying that some of the sort of bigger stuff we do. See if we can get this in the camera shot here. We've got a uh, little jig here we're just having a play around with, just trying arms. This is actually a simulation of one axis of a quadcopter. So just having a go at um, a bit of control. So you can see we've got motor on each end, got some sensor in the middle, accelerometer and the rate gyro. Good fun that. But yeah, it'd be a bit big to fit around the electronics side. In terms of the etching stuff, we've got um, UV exposure units and um, the etching bars over here. Um, we've also got uh, oven for doing SMT rework and um, soldering, so that's really useful. Yeah, sort of oven with thermocouple. And if you want to do something a bit manual, this is a little burst controller for mains in the box here. So I don't know if you burst burst controllers, they let a few cycles through. It's sort of PWM, uh, positive modulation, but on a um, 20 millisecond cycle. So, yeah, pretty handy. And also, we use this as sort of stripping components off old boards or doing rework. Uh, Reflown PlayStation 3s, we do this on here. Right, on the other side of this uh, workshop, we've got the mechanical side, so we'll take you around through some of that lot. Okay, so moving around a bit further, uh, one of the main tools we use really commonly actually, we've got a uh, table saw. Really handy, um, obviously, for the usual sort of cutting wood, that kind of thing. What it's also really good for, cutting up bits of polycarbonate and plastics, and we can do electronic enclosures with this really nicely. Um, as you see, the table becomes a bit of a dumping ground quite often, much to our shame. Uh, on top of here, we've got some polystyrene box that's actually going to become the body for a high altitude balloon. And we've got an aerial here to uh, track the high altitude balloon. It's quite nice actually, we've got a little box of uh, tricks on the end here little voltage meter out and that actually tells you signal strength. So when you're sitting there trying to aim it at uh, the balloon, it gives you a nice indicator of uh, if you're pointing in the right direction. Without having to actually go back to the laptop, check it. Nice bit of kit that. So a table saw here, after that we sort of move on, got a bit more metalworking stuff. Um, can't really see that easy, you've got a metalworking band saw here, you can cut up to 4 inch by 6 inch metal on this. Really handy for doing, so working on the lathe, working on the mill, you want to cut a bit of metal. Just saves having to hacksaw it, and that's get a nice clean cut as well. And sticking the back together, just at the back here, 150 amp MIG welder. It's currently set up. We can weld uh, steel, aluminium with this up to about quarter inch thick. And going with this, got the usual belt, uh, disc grinder, got uh, the usual uh, bench grinder here. Got some hand tools just kept up on the wall. And then again really commonly used tool. Every workshop should have one. Nice solid pillar drill. And on this one what we've also done is mount XY table on here. So you can actually clamp your workpiece in here, 
move it from one side to the other, and move it forwards and backwards as well. It's not a mini machine per se, but it is a really nice way you can get very accurate holes with it, put it exactly where you want to. And just going the other side, sure if you've seen any of the other rods, you'll, uh, uh, you'll probably recognise this. This is the main workbench. Um, whiteboard up here which is incredibly useful for doing brainstorming between a group of you and just sort of you know quickly hashing out circuit ideas that sort of thing. Workbench got a bit of storage around here as well nice solid bench vice which absolutely every workshop needs and um, we also keep a bench power supply out here nice hefty 10 amp job fairly ch cheap Chinese one but it's actually really handy and the amount of times we need a you know nice source of regulated DC power out here it's great just to be able to keep one away from the electronics side and have it nice and accessible. Uh, next bench is precision metalwork. Right, so the precision metalwork inside, this is obviously our main main tool. This is a lathe and mill combination. Works quite nicely actually. Do up to sort of 9 inch diameter, 20 inch length. Then you've got a mill head on here. Also just drops down, you can mount a, you can mount a vice on this mill part as well. It's very, very handy to have one of these things around. The amount of times you want to hold a little mill, you know, do little holders and that sort of thing. Nice to be able to do it. And also, you're doing some precision stuff, you also need the marking outside. So, this is a granite ground plate here. Use that for marking out metal. We've got a uh, height gauge, all the odds and sods you need for something like this. Underneath, we've got an enormous amount of metal stock to work with, also some odd bits and pieces. So here, this is a vacuum pump actually. So if you um, if you ever do moulding, so you want to pour plastics into a mould, you want to do something called degassing afterwards. But you've got these little bubbles forming it, so you want to be able to pull the bubbles out of the moulding. So you use a vacuum pump to put a vacuum around there, extract all the bubbles. Really handy. So yeah, so we've got odd little bits and pieces like that. And propane bottle for. Uh, you use that for a blowtorch, nice heavy duty. And if we're very short of seats, a bit of wood in here, just fit nicely into the propane bottle. Something of a short straw to get that seat though. So moving around, if we go back to the door here, see on the inside the door we've got a notice board, we've got things like all the standard resistor values, E6 down to E192 series. Extremely handy to make sure we pick out the right thing various bits and pieces, interesting articles and things and a few cartoons which might apply to us at times and of course the absolute essentials like the takeaway menus for those uh, late night debugging sessions on the other side we've got another whiteboard, it's really handy sort of checklists and you can go through, give a list of jobs, make sure everyone's done everything and if we go back over sort of above the lathe if you sort of look behind the lathe and above you can see we've actually got a whole uh, bit of storage up there and that's about nine foot uh, across by about four foot deep so you yeah, know nice useful bit of storage loads of sheet materials up there we've got wire and mains cable and rope and metal and it also gives a nice little roof just enough the electronics bit and that means we can keep the electronics bit nice and warm uh, especially getting very cold outside it's nice you can just heat up that area effectively so uh, next we'll wander into the electronics part just starting off with the electronic side from the left hand side here. So, you see across the top, we've got um, some of our books, magazines, and a few bits and pieces. Across the other side, some of the catalogues we use. Really useful to be able to have these around. After that, we've got some quite narrow shelves. We've got loads of projects on here. We've got full breadboards with some kind of speed controller on there, and it's the start of an audio amplifier on there. It's nice to be able to just have quite a few rebels around, just to be able to throw it up there. We also have things like a yeah, home-built power supply up there, and a uh, very small robot, a few bits and pieces, start of a radio and a switch mode power supply coming together here. Um, the whole thing, I'm afraid, is a complete mess. You know, it's the usual, we've got about five projects halfway through, and uh, yeah, fun and games. Moving along here, it's got some of the bulkier tools we keep out this way, and just sort of get them out when we need to. An old sort of HP spectrum analyzer, one of the plug-in ones into a mainframe. This covers about 100 kilohertz up to about one and a half gigahertz. So it's a lovely bit of kit. An old analog oscilloscope. Every lab should have one. Monitor. 
This is extremely useful. And for a start, when we're doing the filming, we use this for the proofing, that sort of thing. We can also throw the oscilloscope screen out into here, very handy. And uh, when you're playing around with VGA, um, uh, FPGAs, throwing out VGA signals or DVI signals, really useful to be able to have a monitor around just to actually see what you're doing on that. Nice sort of tower of wire, kept nice in the hand, very handy, you know, very useful to have that all out here. The usual odds and sods out on the bench. Uh, underneath here, we've actually got um, server rack, good few terabytes of storage in there, it's very handy. Nice to be able to set stuff off. Uh, we've got some more storage, you know, the usual lab supplies, heat shrink and variable and chips and things. So moving on around the uh, rest of the bench here. So we've still got more shelves up here, some storage. We've got sort of these kind of things here, keep our surface mount devices in. And we've got five of these drawers, so that's quite handy, but uh, not static safe. It'll do though. Um, moving down, so we've got bench long here. Nice, lots of breadboards again, lots of space for working in, all of that. Short bench, short sort of little shelf at the side just above here. What else do you buy? Buy a decent pair of wire strippers, it makes such a good, such a big difference. And a few sort of nice little hand tools, you know, lens drum cutters, that sort of thing. Very useful. Working up above here, got the main oscilloscope, got a nice TTI power supply, so that's a triple output there. Very nice sort of box standard bench power supply. Uh, another power supply behind it, you can't really see. Another power supply above here, you can't have too many power supplies. Pulse generator, underneath a nice big old school HP bench multimeter. 3, 4, 5, 7, 8 is lovely. So it does like the full wire measurement, does millivolts, absolutely tiny fractures of an amp and the voltage measurement is fantastically accurate. <laughs> So, sort of more like the pulse generation and wave generation up here. So we've got a pulse generator, function generator, this is an analog one actually, but it goes up about 15 meg. Another uh, function generator here, a bit lower frequency, goes up about 1 or 2 meg or so, but it's DDS, which is a direct digital sensor. Uh, nice amount of stability and very accurate waves. Although, most of these have now been replaced with a uh, Rigel DG1022, so this is arbitrary waveform generation, so this can do anything you like, anything you like to program into there. Very nice generator actually, it does up to about 20 meg, been surprisingly impressed with that. Um, also, right at the bottom of the stack, Nice little spectrum analyzer add-on box. So I use this when I, um, if I need to uh, do something with slightly less lower requirements than uh, required digging out the HP spectrum analyzer. This one actually connects up to an analog scope, uh, takes over the X and Y controls directly, and gives you a nice uh, add-on spectrum analyzer. It's very handy. This. Once I put this down. Go through some of the other bits and pieces up here. We've got more shelves up here, the usual development boards and things. Easy pick development board. We've got some Renaissance ones around and a few bits and pieces. Underneath the bench, we've got a few bits. If you watch the EV blog, you'll probably recognise this. It's a thermal chamber and a uh, nice little wire entry system there. Actually, works out very neatly. Quick little hole saw cut inside and done. With a bit of power, this actually does quite a decent temperature range. If you want to do um, things like voltage controlled oscillators, cold bits oscillators, that sort of thing, and you want to test stability over temperature, it's a great way of doing it, you know, nice and easy, really quick. So this is what we think of sort of test side, measurement side, all of that. If you just turn around very slightly, so we're now just on the back of the uh, lathe bench, we've got what we think of construction side here. So we've got hot air gun, and combined soldering station. Amazing how cheap they are now. Nice Metcal uh, iron. Mostly just for the um, fact it heats up and cools down so quickly. Construction side, we've got a nice Panda Vice soldering system here. I think it's a 625 or something like that. If you haven't seen them before, they're absolutely fantastic. You can adjust them to basically any angle you like. They'll hold boards really easily. This is an old style one, the new one, you can actually retract this with a little lever. Even better. 
And then over here, because we do a lot of embedded work, we've actually got a full PC on this side, uh, monitor, keyboard, and a very useful wireless keyboard with a little trackpad on the side. It makes it very practical to actually do um, monitoring serial ports and USB and that sort of thing. And speaking of USB, we put some very long USB cables around here. So we've actually got USB plugs out on the main bench as well. So you do doing developed uh, embedded devices. You plug it in on that side, you can monitor it on the other side of the bench. All works very nicely. And if you just look behind me, a nice sort of wall of components which you can see some of here. Let's move the probes out of the way. So these are all broken down. We've got um, the E24 range of resistors, all with its own uh, own part. Each drawer is actually divided front and back, so we've got two lots of resistors in there. And then when we've got them, also got surface mount parts in there, like the big ones there, 12 tens. So all the 24 ranges from 10 ohms up to a million ohms, really handy that, especially when you're doing analog work, you want to do filters, just want to grab the right value. And they're all 1% resistors, there's no point in buying 5% anymore. The cost saving is negligible, frankly. Down here you've got your variable resistors, capacitors, inductors, we've also got diodes. We've got toroid cores, made to make your own uh, cores up. And we've got the user selection of semis as well. We've got pretty much development boards for most of the major manufacturers. Along with all the, you know, we've got loads of op amps, voltage regulators, uh, proper sort of nice power. BJTs, FET parts, IGBTs, all of that lot. Some nice high powered diet, like in diodes around. Got one that's on this very high power diode. This is, um, I think it's about 20 watt LED, this is. So, how we could use them on those to do some uh, bench lighting with. But absolutely excellent diodes, Crees. Doing any of this kind of stuff, you're going to need those little adapters and things. So you've got whole trays of BNC adapters to other bits. You've got uh, 50 ohm terminators there, male to male, the absolute standard, BNC to formula adapters. And then up here, you've got all the cables to go with it. Just bring those down. All the usual BNC to BNC cables. Also got things like custom coax there for making your own cables. And loads of 4mm cables around. You'll need loads of those. Okay, I think that pretty much covers the electronics bit quite well. And that takes us back to the start. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope it's been interesting. And uh, if you've got any sort of questions about why I did something a certain way or suggestions about why we're apparently doing something really stupid, I can well believe it. You know, give us a shout, drop us a comment on YouTube or anything. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys, and uh, see you again soon.